So what I'm going to show you how to do on this um, second part is how to do something called tracking. So if you're in the character panel and you see this little setting right here, V um, A with the white box around it, not this one over here, this is kerning, but this one right here is called tracking. And what that does is it changes the space in between um, a group of letters. So I'm going to show you by doing this smash mouth by smash mouth. So I'm going to click on that layer. I'm going to get my type tool and I'm going to highlight. Oh, whoops. If that happens to you, if you accidentally get this where it makes another text box, it means that you didn't put the text tool right on the text. So I'm glad that happened so you can see how to get out of it. If that happens, just drag your that layer that it made into the trash and let's try this again. Get my text tool and this time make sure I select right inside the text line. You can see it's highlighted. I'm going to go over here right on top of that VA. You can actually slide these back and forth to make these changes. So what I want to do with my tracking is I want to make the um, block lines of text be the same same width. So I want this by smash mouth to be the same width as all star. All right, and you're going to do that to all the lines of text. But what I want to show you too is make sure that you have a margin. You see this space right here on the left hand side. Make sure that when you're doing something that has text that you don't put it right over here on the edge. I have like a little bit of space over here and I want you to keep that same space on the other side. So I'm going to press control D to deselect that box. And I want to show you how to put rulers up on your document so that you can make some guides. All right, so do control R, which means rulers. So notice how when I do control R, how it gives me these rulers across the top and it gives me rulers across the side. When you go inside, um, we're going to do rulers that are vertical. So go on your vertical ruler over here and click inside the ruler. So I'm clicking inside there and when I start to move my mouse without letting go of the mouse button, I'm still holding down on my mouse. I'm clicking and I'm dragging this line and I'm going to drop it right there. And that shows me the guide where I'm lining all my text up on the left. And what I want to do is go over here and do that again. So go on your vertical ruler on the left, click your mouse button, hold, drag this guide out here and you want to drop it so that it's about the same space on both sides. So I can see that this one line of text, my B went over a little bit, but um, now I have these guidelines and I want to try to make all the um, text in this poster line up against the side, right side guide that I made too. So I'm going to go on this layer that has my text and I'm going to start highlighting one line at a time like that and then going over here to my tracking and click on top of the VA and hold. So click and hold and when I do that and go to the right it lets me make it, if I go to the left it makes it all squish together. If I pull it to the right it lets me stretch it out and when it gets pretty close to the line then you can drop it there. If you need to like fine tune it you can change the number. So I see it's 100, maybe I want 102 then it's right there on the line. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with this line of text. Highlight over the second line of text. Click on top of the VA. Click and hold and drag very slowly to the right. And then I get it to line up there. And then I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go here. And this time I'm going to drag to the left just a little bit. It won't let me get it exactly where I want it. So in that case, you can just come over here and I'm going to put in like negative 20. That was too much, so we'll try negative 10. There we go. And now I'm going to go on this line of text, highlight that, click on the tracking setting where it says VA, and just click and drag and pull it all the way to the right. And like I said, it might not let you put the exact spot you want, you can go back in and change it. So that's 340. Needs to be a little less. Let's try 330. There we go. All right, so I did this next paragraph um, off camera so you didn't have to watch me do it because it's pretty boring. Now I want to show you what to do. Like, I want some of these letters to be actually bigger so that they stand out. Otherwise, this poster would look boring if everything was the same size. So I want my chorus 
to have bigger letters in it. So let me show you how you can do that. I guess I'm going to make this whole paragraph here be a lot larger. So you know how we change the size of the text right here? You can actually do it the same way you were increasing the tracking. If you hold your cursor on top of those T's, notice how you get these little arrows, you can click and hold and drag those to be bigger too. So I'm going to have every that bottom line, notice how I have this bottom line of text going to my margin. I'm going to make all the other text that big. Now you'll also notice that the space between the lines of text, the leading, is now a little bit too tight. So I'm going to go over here to the leading spot and I'm going to click and hold on that and make that space a little bit bigger as well. All right, and then I'm going to go back and do the same thing that I was doing where I um, made the leading or made the tracking between that line of text go all the way to the edge. All right, so now I have all the tracking adjusted so that my text is going all the way to the edge on both sides. So I want to get rid of these guides now. I can hide them so you can go to view, guides, and we can actually say clear guides. View, guides, clear guides. And those lines will go away. And let's see, I see that my name, I want to scoot it over a little bit, so I'm going to click on that layer and just use my arrow keys to nudge it over there. And the last thing I want to show you is how to maybe change the color on some of your background. So I have this pretty plain background. I'm going to go over here to the right and click on that layer. And I'm going to get this right here. This is the rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to click up here at the very top. It can be outside. Don't worry about trying to get it right on the corner. You can go outside and it'll automatically um, get the edge of the page. And I'm going to draw a box around my... Um, where my title of my song is in the artist and in between the actual verses of the song. So I have that selected. Then I'm going to go to Control U. Control U. This is called Hue and Saturation. So Hue just means color. So if I slide this hue around here, I can change the color. If you change the saturation, you can make something brighter or you can make it dull, like more of a gray. Color. So experiment with that. Just select part of your background and try changing the color to a different color just to make it look a little bit more interesting than it would if you left it, you know, totally plain. All right, and then do Control D to deselect. You know that something's selected when you have these little dotted lines that bounce around on there. And if you want to press Control D, that'll deselect it. So if you want to add any pictures or graphics to this, you don't have to, but if you're interested in doing that, you can go online and try to find a picture. We have a website that we use a lot in here, pixabay.com. So I went on here and then I searched for a picture of stars. And then if you click on free download, you can click this green button here, download, and it'll go to your downloads folder on your computer. And then you can go back into Photoshop and say file open. Then you can go to Downloads on your student drive, and you can, it'll be the most recent picture you have. So you'll notice there's a checkerboard background on mine. That means it's transparent there, and that's what I wanted. So to copy and paste a photo onto my poster, I need to select this first. So if I do Control A, you'll see it gave me those dotted lines that go around the edge. Now I have that layer selected. Control A, select all. And then do Control C, to copy and then I'm going to go back to my poster file and do control V and there they go so you can see it put this layer of stars into my um, poster and then I'm going to do control T and that way I can move things around I really just wanted these stars just to be at the top just to fill out that space so probably let me make it a little smaller so if you go to the outside corner you can make things smaller. Remember, if you go to the outside corner, you can get that little rounded arrow. That's for rotating, so I can rotate it if you want, or you can just scale it by pulling in and out on the corner. And something like that's good. And then when you're done editing something like that, you need to press the check mark to get out of the edit mode. 
All right, that is all I'm going to do on this one. If you want to continue adding things or changing the colors anywhere on your background, like maybe where the chorus is or something like that, you can try some other edits. But this is all that you really have to do. So when you're done, just go File, Save, and that's going to save a Photoshop file. The Photoshop file has all of your layers in it like this, so that if you decided to come back and edit it later, you'll be able to edit it. And when you're done, go to File, Save a Copy. You always need to save a JPEG copy of your work. So we're going to go over here and say JPEG. Just choose the first one that it gives you. It's going to give you several options. Choose the first JPEG and say OK. I'm going to replace the one that I already did. And then for these settings here, just keep it in the middle. A 6 is fine. It doesn't really matter where you put it on the slider, but as long as it's somewhere in the middle. Now the JPEG is important. That's what you're going to need to put in your portfolio. You cannot put your Photoshop file in your portfolio. The Photoshop file is just for you to be able to edit. And what you need to turn into your portfolio is this JPEG.